All right, now in Solution Explorer, right-click controllers and add a new folder. API. Now right-click this folder, add controller. Now from the template, this time, we're going to use Web API 2 controller. Let's call this customers controller. Note the plural naming convention here. Okay, the first time you add an API controller, you get this readme text file that guides you how to configure Web API. And it's pretty easy. In Solution Explorer, scroll down, open up global.asax.cs. So this is application start method. Now back to the readme text file. Here it says, add the following line to the beginning of application start method. So simply copy this and paste it here. Now you need to import the namespace, which is system.web.http. We're done with this file. Save. Let's close it. So here's our API controller. The first thing I want you to note here is that this class derives from API controller as opposed to controller. Now let's add an action here. Public, we wanna return a list of customers. So we can set the return type to I enumerable of customer. Import the namespace, which is bitly.models. Now let's call this get customers. Now because we are returning a list of objects, this action by convention will respond to get slash API slash customers. So this is the convention built into ASP.NET Web API. Now in this action, we're gonna use our context to get the customers from the database. So first we create a private field, application DB context, underline context, initialize it in the constructor. So nothing new so far. And here return context, that customers, that to list. Now another action to get a single customer. So that would respond to a request like this. Public customer, get customer, integer ID. Let's get the customer. Context that customers that single or default. C goes to c.id equals id. Now, if the customer is null, we throw a new HTTP response exception. This method takes an enumeration that specifies the kind of error. So we're gonna use HTTP status code dot not found. So this is part of the RESTful convention. If the given resource is not found, we return the standard not found HTTP response. Otherwise, we return the customer. Now, another action. I wanna create a customer. I want this to respond to a request like this. So we post a customer to customer's collection. Public, what should we return here? By convention, when we create a resource, we return the newly created resource to the client because that resource will probably have an ID generated by the server. So customer, create customer, customer, customer. So this customer object will be in the request body and ASP.NET Web API framework will automatically initialize this. Now we should mark this action with HTTP post because here we're creating a resource. So by applying this attribute here, this action will only be called if we send an HTTP POST request. Now, alternatively, we could name the action using a convention, call it POST customer, and this way we don't have to apply this attribute here. And this is the approach that tutorials on Microsoft website teach you. But I personally find this a poor approach because if you rename this action in the future as part of code refactoring to, let's say, create customer, your code is gonna break. 
this action will no longer respond to HTTP POST requests. In fact, to be honest with you, I have broken an API like this before. So don't use this approach and prefer to explicitly apply this HTTP POST attribute here. Now here, first we validate this object. So if model state not valid, we throw new HTTP response exception. And by convention, the exception would be of type HTTP status code dot bad request. Otherwise, we add this object to our context and save the changes. Context dot customers dot add customer save changes. Now at this point, the ID property will be set based on the ID generated from the database. Now we return this customer object. Another action. I want this one to respond to a request like this. So public. Now in terms of return type, we can either return a customer or void. Different people have different opinions here, but in my opinion, either works. So void, update customer. Now here we need two parameters. One is ID, which is read from the URL, and the other, is customer, which comes from the request body, similar to this action here. Again, we need to validate this input, so I'm going to borrow some code from the other action. Now, at this point, we get the customer in database, single or default, c goes to c.id equals id. Now it's possible that the client sends an invalid ID. So we need to check for the existence of this object. If customer in DB is null, we throw another HTTP response exception with status code not found, just like before. Now, otherwise everything is good. So we need to update the customer, customer in DB, that name, duplicate this line, birth date is subscribed, and membership type ID set here. Now, potentially in the future, we can use a tool like AutoMapper. So if we have 10 properties in our customer object, we can have this tool to automatically map them for us. We don't have to explicitly set each property here. Now, finally, we save the changes and we are done with this action. Now, one more thing, we need to apply HTTP put attribute here. And the last action, we want this action to respond to a request like this. So public void delete customer pass the ID here. Now I'm going to borrow some code from the other action. We need to get this customer from database first and check if it exists or not. Paste it here. Now at this point, context.customers that remove this customer in DB. So this object will be marked as removed in memory. And then we call save changes and we're done. Just remember to add HTTP delete attribute here. So this is how you build APIs with ASP.NET Web API. Next, I'm going to show you how to test this API.